Hey all, JTC here, and welcome back to another user-submitted gameplay review. Today's video is submitted by Aaron, who is playing some Huntsman on Convocation of Decay on Cataclysm. Now, unfortunately, there was no build provided for us to look over first, but regardless, we still have a lot to cover with this one, so let's just jump straight into it. Down we go! Hold your breath, Dory! Craig! So here, when these monks are attacking you, you opt to, instead of uh, spamming left click, you opt to do a bunch of push attacks, and that's actually the best thing you can do against monks. Now, why, you might ask, because monks don't get staggered by pushes. And you're right, but the thing with monks is that their flurry is incredibly deadly, and you want to avoid getting uh, comboed by it. Not necessarily hit, because the first attack doesn't do that much damage. It's the subsequent attacks of the flurry, attacks two and three, which do the most damage, and by uh, blocking those attacks, uh, you actually prevent that massive damage from occurring in the first place. So while you're push attacking, you are still blocking, and you have a very high chance of blocking a singular um, combo hit from a monk or a berserker, and that can be the difference between life and death. So spamming push attacks against monks is the best way to deal with them. So good job. <laughs> All right, so there are a couple of things to unpack here. First, let me get to a better frame to pause on. Uh, okay, so first things first, uh, you hear a bunch of disablers coming behind you. You hear an assassin uh, coming up the side here, and you hear a hook rat coming up here. And the first thing that you do is you ult to hide yourself and you take out the specials. That was really good. Good job on that. However, now after the specials are dead, you have a storm fiend up with your entire team off to the right. And for some reason, you're by yourself back here fighting the general horde. Um, right now, you should be more with your team because of a couple of reasons. One, you are risking a silent disabler coming from behind you and disabling you when you're least expecting it. And you don't have anything to get out of that. Or if, if and honestly, if another wave of specials spawned, uh, you wouldn't have your invisibility to fall back on. And two, your team is up there um, all fighting by themselves. And if anything were to happen, they need you up there to cover for them. And you cannot do that when you're back here. And it's going to put extra strain on your team. Um, I've said it before, but um, when you're playing kind of like a quote-unquote sniper character like Huntsman or Waystalker or anything with, you know, like range... It's generally best to not sit and snipe at range because Vermintide does not support a sniper's play style, which you would which you would normally expect when you think of a sniper. Um, Vermintide is more suited to kind of like close ranged flick shotting with sniping weapons, and by doing this and kind of hanging back away from your team and trying to snipe the boss or snipe specials, usually you end up hurting your team. So you really want to be up there with them to help. So this tip isn't necessarily uh, for console players, but uh, this is really for everybody, but this also really does especially apply to you since you are playing on console. Whenever you're trying to hit any kind of disabler or any kind of ranged target with a, or any kind of target with ranged, wait until they're in a locked animation to attempt to shoot them. Because while this hook rat was down here and was running over here, uh, you shot and you missed and you wasted an arrow. And as you can see, you're already kind, you're pretty low on, uh, arrows already. I almost said money for some reason. And then when the hook rat went into his climbing animation up here, you waited for him to turn the corner and uh, basically walk into your arrow, and that's what allowed you to get the kill. Um, just generally, uh, this is good for everybody. Wait. If, if you're not confident in your aiming, wait until an enemy is in a guaranteed locking animation, such as uh, climbing up, uh, dropping down, or, you know, with like a poison and globadier when he's throwing his... Um, uh, globe or any any specials locked animation. Uh, just wait until they're in that animation to begin shooting them. But this is especially important for you since you're on console and aiming is just going to be much much harder in general. So. 
So if you're trying to snipe, snipe some specials and you have the time, it's much better to fully charge the longbow instead of just kind of rapid firing it with your right click. Uh, longbow has three different uh, kinds of right click charges. It has charge one, which is what you were doing right there. Charge two, where he pulls it back a little more and that's considered the fully charged. And then charge uh, three technically, which is the same damage as charge two, but he just zooms in. Now, uh, normally you want to do either two or three for specials if you have the time, because um, A, you used a lot of ammo right there. You used like three or four when you could have only used uh, two or three, because um, it's pretty much a guaranteed one shot, even on a body shot against uh, specials. I guarantee you would have killed those two warfire throwers in uh, one shot each and used only two arrows against them rather than using three or four. And if you're in a situation uh, or your team's in a situation where you need to kill specials as fast as possible, um, you're not going to have the time or the resources to sit there and plink at them and put in two to three arrows each. So by sitting there and fully charging, you're not only going to save ammo, but also save your team and yourself some headache in the long run. So this is actually something super subtle that you did that was really, really good that I want to talk about. So uh, what happens is this Salt Spire bot gets downed by a bunch of Chaos Warriors that your team is attacking, and you're over his body and you can res him. However, you hear a hook rat, so what do you do? You march your ass back around and you turn around and start looking for that hook rat. Yeah, you got hooked, but the thing is, you completely ignored the, this, the downed Salt Spire, and you were looking for the disabler. And that is something that a lot of people don't do, and I don't know why. People, if somebody is downed, ignore the fact that it's a bot. If anybody is downed and you hear a disabler, completely ignore the downed person. They do not exist. The disabler is the number one target. This guy, kill him first. He is your number one target. Kill him first. First and foremost. Now, obviously, if you hear a hook rat and you and you're playing on Athol and there's someone down below you and you see the hook rat is in fucking Zimbabwe across the universe, then yeah, you can get the guy up. But if you have a, a, a disabler who is an immediate threat to you, do not attempt to res anybody and just get this uh, uh and just kill the disabler and then you can res the other person. Okay, so there is a lot that's going to go on with this end event that I want to talk about. But first, let's talk about what just happened. So uh, we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to kind of go through play by play what happened here. So the Wetelgi gets down, gets picked back up by Ironbreaker, and then the Wetelgi immediately dies. However, when the Wetelgi immediately dies, the Victor Saltspire bot immediately comes back up. Now, usually it's not a good idea to go to get a bot up because they're useless. And in this case, uh, a bounty hunter bot in this situation is not very helpful. And uh, throughout the entire game, no one has seen this because I haven't shown the entire clip. But um, throughout this entire game, this Salt Spire bot has died a shit ton and has not been useful at all. But in a situation like this, um, when it's just you and an Iron Breaker, it's actually much better to go for this Victor Salt Spire bot, this Bounty Hunter bot, because A, in a, in a panicked, you know, situation like this, a clutch situation, you need all hands on deck, even if it's just a bot to take some aggro off of you for a couple of seconds. And B, you're playing with an Iron Breaker. This Iron Breaker is super tanky, and he's going to survive for quite a while, so you can pretty much rely on him to be okay on his own for a little bit. However, uh, for some reason, you take a long time to drop here. Uh, you kind of try to shove your way through, and then you kind of like, just kind of chill right here, and then you get your block broken, and then you drop. And what should have happened uh, right here was you should have just pushed and then immediately dropped and ran for the res. By stalling in this area, you not only uh, wasted some time, but you also risked getting instantly downed by a bunch of the enemies around you. Because all it would have taken was like basically just one overhead uh, to instantly break your block, and then you would have eaten about 30 hits at once and then instantly died. So you were definitely risking death here by kind of lingering up here. So in this situation, just go for the res.
Okay, I have to say, this is one of the coolest clutches I have ever seen. And I, I really want to talk about this. I'm actually super excited about this. So let's back up and let's talk through what happens and uh, just kind of go through a play-by-play. -play. So he is uh, shooting this Chaos Warrior when the Victor Salt Spire bot suddenly gets downed and the Iron Breaker also immediately goes downed and afterwards. Now, an assassin spawns, so getting that Salt Spire bot up is the good call, or not getting up is the good call. However, uh, there is also a Warp Fire Thrower off to the right, right here. Now, he's going into a really bad situation. There's enemies behind him, there's enemies right here, and there's enemies in front of him. He doesn't really have any other option than to push forward and hope he can make his ways out. Now, oh, hello, hello. Okay, now what he does, he gets pushed a little bit, and what he notices... Um, is right here, there is a little tiny lip on the ground. Um, I think it's only about this tall. However, you can jump on this. So what does he do? He attempts to jump on the slip, fails. However, he's able to shove this storm vermin right here out of the way. Oh, you can't see my cursor. He shoves this storm vermin out of the way to make some room for himself. He jumps on top of that and uses that as a catapult to leap over the storm vermin to safety. Now, what does he do after that, you may ask? Now, of course, right there, he did fail. However, he was able to shove his way through. And that is a little bit of luck, but regardless, it's still very good, uh, very good shot calling on his part. Now, what does he do? He begins to jump, which usually isn't a great idea. However, he was probably banking on the fact that, that Chaos Warrior was going to shove him right there, which sends him catapulting this way and makes some distance between him and the Horde. However, he's not done yet. He continues to jump because he knows there's a Warp Fire Thrower behind him, and he jumps right as the Warp Fire begins to flame him, and what does that do? He gets hit by the Warp Fire, and that also catapults him forward, making uh, even more distance. Now, of course, this might have all just been coincidence, but I like to think that you were thinking about this as you did it, and that was some fucking beautiful shot calling on your part. That was, uh, that's like something only really console players can do, because it's not really possible. Normally what you would want to do here is dodge dance your way, just, you know, block and then dodge dance your way around into the corner and blah 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 blah, but you can't do that on console, so you have to get creative. So, really man, good fucking job. Okay, so <clears throat> back when you were over here, right after the Salt Spire died and right when the Krillian died, you had a beautiful opportunity to just to jump down here and go for the res of the Ironbreaker, who's been up for a little bit. And in a situation like this, you desperately need the Ironbreaker up to kite for you. For some reason, though, you walk around over here. I think what happened was you weren't really paying attention because you were still, like, probably shaking from the adrenaline of the clutch you just did, which I understand. But um, you walk over here, and it looks like you kind of have an oh shit moment. Uh, I didn't realize that I was the last one left alive. And then you turn around to try to make your way back, but by that time, um, all these enemies are on you, and it forces you to drop over here behind you, which puts you in a much, much worse situation and uh, puts you at a much higher risk of death. So, yeah. Right here, I would just say be paying attention to what's going on with your team. Uh, I know, like, people make mistakes, and it's like, that's fine. But uh, I really, the only thing I have to say here is kind of pay attention to what's going on and pay attention to who's up. Okay, this is also something that has really nothing to do with the gameplay review itself. It's just something else that I want to say. Uh, after the Huntsman here, Aaron, gets up the Iron Breaker, the Iron Breaker immediately has a massive, massive horde on him, goes off to kite, and after a couple of seconds, pings thank you. Um, I'm just gonna say it, guys, don't be nice in a clutch situation. If you're having to clutch something, don't sit there and worry about, oh, that guy rezzed me, I need to ping thank you. Like, that, that, that's, that's a double-edged sword because, yeah, this community is so great that uh, they get stressed over having to be nice and wanting to ping thank you to show appreciation for someone saving their hide. But in this kind of situation, you should not be uh, focusing on being nice. You should be focusing on staying alive. You can be nice after the clutch has happened and after there's a lull or after the map and you can say, hey, by the way, man, thanks for saving my hide. Y you need to save that for later when you're not uh, so close to death. That's, that's it. Right. 
Yeah, this is an unfortunate death, but uh, it does teach a very good lesson. If you ever hit a gas rat and you don't kill him, do not rush in with melee because he is going to suicide. And it's basically impossible to melee kill a suiciding gas rat and not have it explode on you unless you're playing like either host or someone with like sub 60 ping. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to get that melee kill off on time, and it's always going to explode on you and kill you. So yeah, here you should have just kind of backed off, ran away, let the gas rat come to you, or explode off on his own by himself. Okay, so here you go invisible to kind of help your team uh, and take out some of the elites, and you kill one Chaos Warrior pretty quickly. However, the second one you pepper a couple of times and you don't end up killing him by the time your ult is out and he's still alive. Now, in situations like this, when you're trying to kill armored units with a timed ult like Huntsman's, you don't actually want to aim for uh, super armored units. You want to aim for non-super armored elite units uh, for two specific reasons. One, uh, these enemies uh, are just as deadly as these guys. Because every single elite in this game has what I like to call a running overhead. And what that basically is, is an attack that an elite can do while uh, in the running animation that has the damage profile of an overhead strike. AKA, it will one-shot you. So every single elite in this game is incredibly deadly and needs to die fast. And also because you can kill this guy much, much easier than you can kill this guy. Um, in this situation, you tried to kill the Chaos Warrior and you failed. You killed you killed only one of them, technically. Um, so you technically only killed one Chaos Warrior. However, if you had aimed for the Storm Vermin, you could have killed three to four of them. And uh, in this case, you had uh, you basically reduced the chance of your team dying by one time, two times, 1.5 times, whereas you could have instead reduced the chance of your team dying by three to four times by killing three to four more enemies. So yeah, in this situation, you definitely want to aim for enemies that are easier to hit that are at the same threat level as a Chaos Warrior. Once more, thanks so much to Aaron for submitting his gameplay for review. If you'd like to submit your own gameplay for a review, be sure to join my Discord using the link down in the description below and check out the gameplay submission channel for instructions on how to do so. See y'all next time!